What do you think this data is? Um, uh, I mean, what is the information here on this data? Any any idea on anticipation? Good, fantastic, really. So we c we call this symbol test or symbol questionnaires. If we change it to zero and one, yeah. Okay. I will give you an example of the data scaling. Okay. Now this one, we can scale this data, which means we can score this data. Can you see any similarity between these answers? Because we just basically change yes and no to zero and one. Let's take five and six. What do you think about it? Person five and person six. And we can see the person five has answered two questions correct and one question wrong. Let's say let's say two question yes and one one question no. What we call this? So these patterns we find among the data. Can you find another similarity as well on the data? Two and four, okay, make it simple. So what we mean by that, so we mean, for example, if you are in a class with other eight students and I, I gave you a questionnaire and at the end I mark your questionnaire, anyone answer zero will not have any mark, anyone answer one will have a mark and at the end I will grade it, you guys let's say between A, B, C or fail. Now you and the person number four, you got the same result, one, okay? Let's say if we got one mark for one question, for each correct questions. Now, both of you answer different really item, but you got the same grade, okay? So they, they, they're not really similar questions, but you got the similar result. Here, item response theory will discover the real different between you and the other person has more ability than Turkey, which me, okay? Because she answered number three, item number three. Item number three is weight more than item one. Item one is relatively easy. So that's why we need item response theory. Okay. Now, what about this? What if, if we give anyone uh, answer zero, zero, we give them zero, right? Okay, anyone answer zero, zero, one, we give them number one. Any answer zero zero one here got one yes, so the 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 total here one. How many two? Fantastic. And this one, brilliant. And this one, and this guy. So how many scale we go? One two three yeah. Actually we got zero, one, two, three. This is your mark. Let's say you got you give this one A, and this you give this B C. This is fail. Now these guys. On the sheet, they will get the same result. They will go S A C, right? And these guys, they will go B. Oh, the, sorry, <laughs> and this one. Only that guy will go three, and this one will fail. Okay? This way, it will not tell me anything. This this particular way, if I present it to my student or my department, trying to uh, assess our our assessment. So we wanted to see is our uh, exam fair is it good do we need to change the exam so this is the the uh, approach will help us to assist our assessment based on the historical data we have so this one historical data okay now what uh, item response theory will give us back um, result numeric number it will tell me about this item okay okay at the end we'll go total score Okay, we call it scale or score. I will never know. I need a, I need approach. That's the reason why statistically you cannot do it manually. You have to do it using item response theory. Is it this the difficult one? Is this the one difficult? Now, before I go to item response theory and go beyond, the data could be more than this, could be bigger than this. You could have up to 100 items. And also, why is difficult? If we have 1,000 records, we cannot measure them manually. You will never get this manually because it's involved in many complication calculation. Okay, however, the, the item response theory is very, very uh, simple. What is item response theory? It's just the way how we analyze the response, the information, the historical information. You could improve it. You could just, your aim is to see the score. 
Now, once we examine this data on, on RStudio, we are going to see something like this. And basically, it will, will tell you what is the probability will be answered by the candidate. Now we go to RStudio. Okay, this is my script I wrote. Now, before you use um, this um, kind of model, you need to make sure you install these packages. Okay, uh, and then activate these packages. Actually, usually there is two steps to install package and activate in R. You can either write it down as here or just go to Tools, Install Package. Now, the first things first, if you don't have the data installed, my data already been imported. It's here. It's called LSAT. It's a public data. It contains 1,000 observation. It has five items with five variables. I will show you example of this data. So there is five questionnaires or five items. We have 1,000 response, and uh, each one of them have answered different way. He has no any question answered uh, correctly. So zero mean not correctly. One is correctly. Now you need to import your data. You need, however, to careful what type of data you have and in which format. Now I could I could choose this data. I don't have and I don't have variables. I just have one columns and many detail, which which should be this is saved correctly. So that I I said why I say careful the way you have saved your data. I prefer CSV format. So the best example is this data. Okay, so make sure you clean them, you prepare the data for item response theory. If you have something like yes and no, convert it to zero and one. Okay, and then um, add it uh, to, to our studio. Now, uh, you need to explain what is this item, item one and item two and item three, and what is this data, where the data came from, and what kind of data, and, and you have to give an insight and background of the data. Other way to explain your data, simply use this basic method. Um, for example, a uh, summary of the data. If I run this one, basically is going to be silly answer because zero and one, we're not going to get any maximum or minimum. You're not going to get any median or mode. If you know the statistical method uh, or statistical calculation, you will not get any um, a, a very good results. So you don't need to show this freely. You need to show the dimension and the names, for example. You can say this is the item uh, names I have the columns five columns and if I want to if I wanna examine the structure then I click str the name of the data what's going to tell me what kind of um, format this item was stored is an integer and it's showing you an example zero and uh, so this is ready and uh, correct format to use to apply item response theory. Now we install the packages, we activate them, and we run few summary and we show the, the original data, which is important. Now we need to fit the model. Now let's run this one again. We have saved it. This is mean there is no error. Sometime you would um, encounter error. And I always I find the error associated with two problems. The data itself is not saved in integer. This is very important. I mentioned it uh, just a few minutes ago. Your data have to be integer, and the way you examine it, you run str before you run it. The other problem, one of these packages is not installed. This is the only two problem I ever encounter. Now let's call the summary now. Okay, I like to be more specific. What I do, I call the coefficient. Okay, let's see the difference between summary and coefficient. Can you tell me item one? zero uh, minus uh, minus the three is it difficult or easy item fantastic good well done because it is uh, less than 0 0.05 the result of these column difficulties showing you how difficult now what is discrimination um, we'll go back to it don't worry how steep okay how steep now this is is not relatively steep you will see some some curve goes really down and then and that's that's the result here 0 8 is not, it's not none of these items I will plot them all in a minute going to be very steep now let's go down and plot this uh, result so you got two type of plotting when we talk about item response area the first one the item characteristic curve is just showing what we just talk about it now the probability and the other one 
item information kev okay item uh, information kev it will will give you more uh, how much information we gain about each candidate or about each person now let me plot it run now we have five items so which one of these difficult and which one the easiest one you can see uh, if i will withdraw if i will draw here imaginary line and go down it's almost minus three between minus two and minus four and that shows you what you say to me 100 percent correct minus three so if we we put a lot of dot here and give them numbers uh, the item of a probability will will match here so it's mean that really not strong uh, or not difficult question anyone with zero ability he will just tick and guess he will will get that probability will get it right okay so item three still even among these comparing to this question still the difficult one but really to be honest is not really that difficult if the number three goes here yes uh, then we can say it's very hard question now you will ask me Turkey how you did um, basically take out uh, two item and plot them without showing all I would say to you very simple use this code uh, and the model is um, item response theory I'm gonna show item four and five actually let me show one and three but let's see how it goes you see now we select only item one and item three now anything beyond this factor score to two parameter or three parameter but I have put little small description I hope will be helpful to to know the difference between one parameter and two parameter the only things be of advice as a coach put as much information about your original data talk about it what is your data from where they came how did you collect it and you can show how what the function you used to explain your data and show the graph and there you go finish you can also plot the uh, the second type which is this one let me show you the item information curve here it will tell us number three cover the more region which mean number three really truly not just difficult we can gain much information about our candidate or about our customers than number one two three four uh, number one two four and five so number three you're gonna gain more information because it's fall here while number one is not really much because you see it's left in uh, zero minus two minus four so we don't have much information about our candidate if they answer only one but if they answer number three we can tell uh, much further detail or great detail about their characteristic okay and about their personality so it will tell on that measurement result what is the best uh, item among this will tell us more about our personality we can focus on this question we can divide it in two questions we can get more information about our candidate